Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe video. I'm going to try to get right into it this week with, with a kind of update on what exactly has gone on this particular week. And uh, we're getting ready to close out the month of November. Before I just sort of do some ad hoc comments for you, though, on what is going on here and now, understand that um, the Dividend Cafe podcast is pretty much going to be this week a really helpful audio version of the written Dividend Cafe, just walking through exactly the content that's in our written weekly commentary, DividendCafe.com. And then at the Advice and Insights podcast, I'm doing a sort of special um, carve out on the Fed, what's going on with the Fed right now and where the relevance into markets is from the potential aspects and, and, and ramifications of monetary policy. So we have two different podcasts to choose from if you're interested in those mediums, um, and that's kind of the distinction between the two podcast properties. What we're doing here in the video, for those of you who like watching the video and looking at my uh, uh, handsome face, I suppose, is the uh, breakdown of this week. Well, we didn't do a video last week because of Thanksgiving, so I guess I need to back up, but it was a really short abridged week, but not if you're looking at market prices. Market dropped 1,000 points last week. We were only open half day um, on, on uh, Friday, and we were at a uh, closed market day on Thursday for Thanksgiving. So in three and a half days, and I can promise you it was really more like two days because of you know limited uh, volume and participation. In those periods of time, they had about two 500-point down days in a row. It was brutal Monday, Tuesday. Um, an acceleration of losses around both the two-headed monster of the Fed, the fear of continuing tightening policy that might overshoot what is needed to achieve rate neutrality, and then the second being the um, escalation of the trade war with China and the possibility that we get into a worse global um, negotiating situation that then results in uh, more headwinds for U.S. business investment. Okay, that's a nutshell. Now this week, the market's up about 1,000 points. I'm recording right now, midday on Thursday. So anything could change for the rest of the day on Thursday and God knows what could happen on Friday in the market. But as we stand now, yesterday on Wednesday, we had the biggest update we've had in the market since like March, the second biggest we've had all year. And you had a pretty good up movements Monday, Tuesday as well. So it's not exactly to the decimal point, but you get my idea give or take up a thousand this week and down a thousand last week. If we were ending right this second, November would actually be up a little bit, which is crazy, in the Dow, um, not in the NASDAQ, uh, where FANG has just been, the, the FANG stocks have been utterly decimated for the last two months. So I think that the big theme I have right now is that there is a two-headed monster, and that monster is either a friend or a foe, has the potential to be a friend or a foe. It can really punish people who get overly defensive right now in their investment portfolio, and it could um, potentially create further downside as well. And so you always have situations that could be either a positive, excuse me, a positive or a negative. In this case, you have a positive or a negative from two different things. So there's kind of four outcomes out there. And what I mean is, where, uh, how far the Fed chooses to go, how hawkish they choose to be around monetary policy. Well, yesterday, Chairman Jerome Powell said at the Economic Club of New York that we are now just below the neutral rate. October 3rd, which is the event that kind of started the seven or eight week market sell-off, he said we have a long way to go to achieve neutral. In both cases, by the way, I just quoted him verbatim. There's a lot of context you could add around all that. And there's a lot of interpretation necessary to know what these things might potentially mean. But you can see the distinction in the wording from eight weeks ago till today. And the markets responded by the belief that, well, maybe he's in a rate hike in December. I certainly think he will. And I certainly hope he will. But the notion that we've been having, the markets have been pricing in that they're going to end up going defining the neutral rate. Right now, the Fed funds rate's at two and a quarter, and that they may actually think they need to get to three and a half or four percent to get a neutral rate, so that we might have five, six, or seven rate hikes, seven would be pretty extreme, to go. And his language yesterday maybe suggested that they're thinking about a redefinition of the neutral rate. Maybe it's going to only be 2.75 or three percent. So markets being forward-looking, 
they say, okay, potentially we may have less tightening, less of a contraction of liquidity, more opportunity for credit expansion, which could be productive use in the economy. That, that um, I, I will, on the Advice and Insights podcast, elaborate more on the ramifications of that, the pros and cons as to what the Fed may end up doing. Right now, I'm just describing for you what the markets are responding to. The markets uh, had feared tighter Fed activity, and right now they are embracing the possibility of less tight Fed activity. It's very binary and very simple. That's your friend or foe outcome about one head of the two-headed monster. The second is the global trade war. The global trade war itself is not necessarily the biggest factor. It's what it represents to business investment. There's no possible way we will get the capital expenditures and business investment we need to grow GDP the way we need to if businesses are afraid of uncertainty around what global trade uh, conditions, representations, allowances, uh, expense are going to be. And so President Trump, by the time you're watching this video, will have already arrived in Buenos Aires for the G20 summit, and he has a meeting with China's President uh, Xi, I always pronounce it wrong, Xi Jinping, on a Saturday. So we shall see. Uh, I think there's a very small probability of a really good outcome. There's a very small probability of a really bad outcome. And there's a very big probability of a so-so outcome that is kind of temporal, positive, directionally, but um, not closing the whole deal, so to speak. That's where I think we are. So you look, there's plenty of other things that are happening right now in the interim. But nothing substantive beyond that even compares to the two-headed issue I brought up here. And you could see why there's a condition by which you could say, I want to go to cash. I am nervous about market conditions. They announce a China deal and they're up a thousand points. Those that panicked last week are never going to get back the thousand points, right? That they missed out on this week. That's why I'm going to close out this video by telling you you have to go this week. Even if you hate my written commentary and you only like looking at me, you have to go to DividendCafe.com because the chart of the week shows you the consequences throughout the, uh, the market downturns of various uh, behaviors in trying to trade one way through it uh, when we've had a big down day or down period and what the performance differential is from writing through different things to trying to react and so forth. And so the chart will tell you more of the story. It's extremely self-explanatory, extremely obvious on what the conclusion ought to be. Defend yourself from present market conditions, proper behavior, with thoughtful asset allocation, with financial advisors like us that are actually actively engaged in trimming profits where things get pricey, that are adding to positions opportunistically, but that are maintaining an allocation with fixed income alternatives and equities so as to not let something blow somebody up. Asset allocation is your best defense right now. It's your best friend, and it costs nothing. That's all I have to say this week on the Dividend Cafe video, and we look forward to coming back to you into the month of December next week. It is December. Think about that for a little bit. Have a good weekend.